on sentiment out there, concerns about the state of the economy south of the border. Joining us now to discuss what investors should be keeping in mind during this heightened volatility is Damien Fernandez, Managing Director and Portfolio Manager with TD Asset Management. Damien, thanks so much for joining us right off the top here. Uh, two days of sell drawdowns. What do you make of this market action? I think, uh, Greg, thanks for having me. Uh, can, uh, just as a favor, maybe when we're in a bull market, you also invite me on. Because I feel like whenever <laughs> I there's... I think you've been here in bull markets, too. I know, I know. I'm, 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 we're in a bull market. Uh, just uh, let, me put some, let me put some context to that. Um, we're having a very conventional like drawdown in markets. What I mean by that is year to date, even including today, the S&P is up 14%. The NASDAQ's, uh, the NASDAQ is off 3% today, but it's just back where it was in June, less than like June 8th, if memory serves me, less than 60 days ago. So we're having what every year, the market has these 10% drawdowns at a certain degree of frequency, right? And just, you have, you have, you have a fair degree of bullishness that people get really excited. And then the reverse takes place where, uh, you know, people have to moderate their expectations. And that's coincided with, as Anthony said, he did a great job of highlighting, you know, some weakness we're seeing in labor. And now the market is looking things, but big picture, we're still on track for like the market is still up double digits. The TSX is still up seven and a half percent, including today's drawdown. And the the risk factors at the start of the year, right? And I could talk about, you know, really hot labor market, wage gains, inflation, a Fed, a Federal Reserve and central banks that were still, you know, applying the the brakes in terms of uh, the monetary posture. All of those big macro variables are 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 in reverse. There's evidence of a soft landing. It's the Bank of Canada is cutting rates. The Federal Reserve looks to cut 50 basis points in September. Inflation is falling. Wage gains, like you saw from the uh, employment report today, average uh, average hourly earnings are down. They have a three handle on them. They had close to a five handle last year. So uh, I look at it right now, and I just think we're having a very healthy correction. And I, I know in the like, I, I don't want to, you know sound blasé when I say this. I know when I was like, people are healthy correction, the market's off. What I mean by healthy correction is bigger picture. If you're underweight equities, if you're not like these, these are buying opportunities. Like we're having a conventional pullback. Fixed income is providing ballast, right? Like last year in 2022, both equities and fixed income uh, fell. This year, fixed income is doing what it's supposed to do. Is it's providing insurance in a drawdown. So um, I, I think we're just having a conventional, you know, pullback exacerbated by, you know, summer low liquidity trading. A lot of fascinating things you said there. I want to hone <laughs> in on one thing you said, because I heard uh, rumblings of this the other day as well. I think you said Fed September 50 basis points. Uh, is the market starting to think that perhaps by the time we hit that September meeting, it's going to justify Jerome Powell not moving by 25, but moving by 50 in that first cut? Well, uh, so I... so. Before today's drawdown, it was a 20, there was some probability to 50. Right now, after today, given the drawdown, we are looking at, at 50. The market's basically, uh, you know, uh, holding the Fed to the feet to the fire and saying that, you know, this is what we worry about. And I want to talk about risks too. What would you actually have to worry about in the market right now is non-linear risks, right? Where you have a significant drawdown in financial assets that causes a pause in activity from CEOs, from corporates. And that, that actually, you know, has starts that, you know, vicious circle. So the, the way the Fed insures against that, it provides, uh, it provides easing. Right, so that's the, so. Right now, the way, because what what does with easing, you lower, fi you 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 reduce uh, the financial tightness. You create some confidence in the marketplace. Right now, it's just a sentiment driven game. What you don't want is a sentiment bleeding because the econ the economic situation. We saw this in earnings. We haven't even talked about earnings, but earnings were in the midst of you know Q two earnings. Yes, there's been significant price moves in some names, but the actual year on year earnings growth is positive. The S and P X Mag Seven for the first time, you know, since 2022, is actually has positive earnings growth. I think there's a lot of things happening under the surface that aren't being fully appreciated, and uh, yeah, I, I think the Federal Reserve is now on an easing path, and that too is supportive for risk assets and for investors. Let's talk about putting that in context for investors in terms of a strategy. I believe your mantra, I don't know if you say this every morning when you wake up, but <laughs> I've been told your mantra is keep calm and compound on. Explain that to us. Well, just the the market is like the day-to-day -day volatility in the market should be viewed as investors as opportunities. What do I mean by that? Is that, uh, you know, like the longer 
I, I fully believe that if the evidence is we are going into, we are, we're convinced we're going to recession, you should take corrective action. We're not there yet. So the idea of like keep calm and compound on is that, you know, when, when the market is throwing out, when the market is throwing out opportunities like today, when it's off two, 3% and significant names are off a lot, if you've done your fundamental research, if you feel comfortable with the free cash flows that these companies are generating, if you believe we're not going to go into recession and a soft landing accompanied by Fed easings there, compound on is literally like you're getting a chance to buy, enter the market right now and, you know, potentially at a good entry level. I, I I think that, that like everyone should do their own fundamental research and individual names, but we try not to panic. Our desk tries not to panic. I in names that like is it has the fundamental thesis changed? Are we moving into recession? Is there and and I just like the uh, the big picture things. I just don't see it. Let's talk about that. The, the soft landing. I mean, this is the scenario that's been baked into the markets, right? Yeah. That we will be able to get inflation under control. Inflation is moving the right way by me. I mean, the central banks. I'm not a central banker. You get inflation <laughs> under control. You're able to cut rates. You haven't done too much damage to the economy. Therefore, you're soft landing. It just when we got a bit of economic data, including the jobs today, some manufacturing stuff yesterday, it seemed that there was some on the street that started to question that soft landing. You, you still see a, a path to it. Oh, well, I think I think the base case is soft landing. The market's panic panicking because there's now a probability that the soft landing might be some somewhat worse. But that's that shouldn't be viewed as the base case, right? And the, it, the these things almost have like the market's panicking actually incentivizes the Fed to rethink whether it's it has to ease faster and more quickly. So th that's so these things almost are, are related, but the base case should be a soft landing. And let me put some numbers to that soft landing. Anthony did a great job, as mentioned, on uh, providing context on the jobs numbers. But we created 114,000 jobs. Pre-pandemic, that was a good number, right? We have hourly earnings right now growing, you know, 3.7% year on year. That is not inflationary, especially that yesterday non-farm productivity was out, and that was very supportive. Um, the 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 fly in the ointment that uh, we'll need more corroboration on was yesterday. You had the ISM manufacturing index, and that was actually pretty weak. But I'm not sure if if something's changed because like like when you compare jobs to the ISM, jobs data is hard data. Like you count the number of people who are employed, the unemployment rate. The ISM is sentiment. You ask purchasing managers how are they thinking about their order books, and, and I and I don't know how to explain this, but since the you know, pandemic, there's been a general negativity in the sentiment data that hasn't been corroborated by the hard data. And I think there's some likelihood here. I'm, I'm, I'll look at the ISM next month to see if we have some degree of, of bounce back. But like we are having a very conventional, like at the start of the year, people were people wanted jobs to come off their, you know, the, the, the really red hot pace they were growing at. And now we're here and people are like, oh my God, we're panicking. It's, it's going to fall off a cliff. And uh, the economy just doesn't work that way, right? Like we had, like a lot of, like we're in the midst of earnings releases. The, like the only, you know, the the only sour uh, sour point is that the consumer look, consumer companies, particularly the low end consumer, looks to be challenged. But whether it's industrials or even to, to a certain degree tech, and they've all pointed to, they've all had upward revisions. They've all raised guidance. So they're not raising guidance if they if 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 they're seeing the economy de deteriorating in real time. So final thought, Damien, I want to ask you, as you mentioned, you know, August is a month of, you know, low liquidity. We've already had some volatility and excitement to start the month. What do investors need to do when they take that deep breath and think about the weeks ahead until we get back into the serious season of September? Greg, you and I are in Toronto. The weather, it's its really nice outside. Maybe stop staring at the screens and pick up a book or to the or listen to the nearest podcast. August and particularly uh, these are like August and September uh, historically are very volatile months. And that's just a combination of low liquidity into the summer coupled with like where event risk like we had today with the jobs number is magnified. Like, like that's that's really what's what's happening here. But uh, and yes, we can you know po point to geopolitical things that are happening, but those are always present. And, and what what normally happens is um, the seasonality uh, improves as we move through the year. October, November, December are actually very strong months. So I'll get back to you know what we we're talking about, just overall allocation, how we and and positioning. I actually do think right now that if you were, um, if you haven't been, if you're underweight equities and your overall allocation and where, you know, the keep common compound on where you want to get to in terms of 
Like you're actually getting a chance to start, you know, dipping your toe. If you were underweight fixed income and you were overweight equities, you're seeing evidence that fixed income is providing you some comfort right now. That's that's also so this like, like so, sometimes you know just like like the the incentive to panic is right there. And right now today, people are like, oh my god, we're on the cusp of a recession. But to repeat, there's 114,000 jobs created. To repeat. The the in in the, from the jobs number today they have a metric called the diffusion index. It's the numbers of number of industries that are hiring, expanding employment, uh, less the number of industries that are reducing firing, reducing employment. That's at fifty three percent. There's still more industries expanding employment than are cutting workers. I I just think that like look we're in a seasonally uh illiquid period. It's uh it, not everyone's there and people are, you know, we've had a huge run in markets. So it's very, very consistent that we'll see a pullback. And that pullback could be a few percent lower, but depending on your positioning and if you've you know done the work, if do you find interesting opportunities here where companies can grow cash flow? That's our that's our you know remit. That's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm.